But with the first tenon uh, dovetailed into the barrel, the next step is going to be to inlet it into the stock. And then when that's done, we'll dovetail a second tenon to the barrel and we'll inlet that into the stock and then likewise on the third one. And after that, we can pin them together. Okay, so now we're, we're going to take some, some inletting black and I'm just going to brush it. Gonna brush it on that lug. And then we'll just put it right in place. Okay, you can see that I've got the mortise started for the lug. And I'm using two chisels for that. I outlined it with this chisel that I've showed you before. And because this is such a small mortise, I've been inletting it with this micro chisel. This is not a really strong chisel, as you can guess. So I've got to be careful uh, with how I use it. But it's able to get into that small space and take the wood off. So, uh, so I've put a little more, a little more inletting black on here, and now we're going to see how we're doing. All right. So I hope you can see this. Well, I've got black right in the bottom of that mortise, so we're pretty good on our on our shape. I've just got to deepen it up. And I'm just going to keep doing that with with these two chisels. Okay, so I'm going to just take that color out. And then I'll try it again and I'll keep going until it's fully uh, fully seated with the flat against the bottom of the barrel channel. Here's just a little aside. You gotta get the barrel in and out of the stock quite a bit. And uh, you know, it should be a pretty good tight fit. So especially when you're first getting going, it can be tough. What I use, I took a long screwdriver, I cut the tip off of it, made a rod, and I've wrapped it in a couple of layers of duct tape so it won't damage the bore and I just slide that baby in here and then I can lift the barrel right out okay we're getting pretty close now so I'm painting the bottom flat right around that lug um, with the inletting black because I want to make sure I'm getting a good contact with the bottom of the barrel channel so we'll just give that a try. All right, we're looking pretty good. I mean, we're down about to depth, so I'm gonna pull the barrel out and see if we're leaving the black on the barrel channel. Okay, so we're leaving color on the flat here. So, looks like we're all the way down, so we can start, uh, we can start putting in the other two barreled pinning tenons, and then we can drill it up. Okay, I've got my front barrel lug on, and I put it about three and a half inches back from the muzzle. I, I had this one back about five inches originally when I made it over 20 years ago, and that's really not so good. Uh, it gives you a better bond if it's closer to the muzzle, but you want to be past where the muzzle cap's going to be and into your molding, really. So now I'm, I'm just going to take a file, and I'm going to cut it off even. with the barrel channel. There's only so much you can do with a file because you get to the point where you're you might be intruding on your your tenon here. So once I filed it all down I'm gonna finish it off uh, with some sandpaper. So once I've got it down a good bit what I do is I switch over to that sandpaper that we've uh, carpet taped onto a block and now I'm just gonna take that sandpaper and I'm going to go over it until I've got all of the sides uh, true to the flats and then we can inlet it. All right, front tenon is ready for inletting now. Okay, now it's time to pin the uh, the tenons into the stock to secure the barrel. 
and I hope you'll bear with me if you hear any funny noises over the video. We just started a kitchen remodeling right above my shop and this is demolition day and things are being ripped out so it's, it's kind of noisy. But here's how I do it. And I'm not claiming that this is the best way to do it or the only way to do it. It's just my way to do it. I use a couple of steel squares. This is an unmodified one. And this is one I modified specifically for pin and tenons. So compared to this one, you can see that this has been cut out and it has a point on it. And you'll see how that works in a minute. Now here's a better look at that modified steel square. And now I'll show you how it's used. First thing I do is I find the center of the tenon with the unmodified square. And then I just draw a series of lines around the barrel right at that center point. Okay, for the next step, the barrel goes back in the stock. I've got the line up here that marks the center line of the tenon. I'm going to take a piece of masking tape and I'm going to carefully lay it along that line. Okay, now that tape provides my, uh, my basically, my vertical reference. And now I'm going to mark the height. And in order to do that, I'm going to use my modified square. Okay, now I'm going to use my square. I'm going to square it up on the top barrel flat. Right, I want it good and firm. I'm putting the point right along that line of tape. And then I'm just going to tap it. And that's going to give me my mark on this side. Now I'm going to flip the stock around and do the same thing on the other side. Okay, I've got it flipped around. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put my Steel square, square on the barrel, line it up on the tape, give it a tap, and now I have marked both sides for drilling. So I can drill from here and from here, and the holes are going to meet perfectly. Okay, if this was a flimsy pre carved stock, I wouldn't take this next step because there wouldn't be enough wood. But this is one step away from being uh, just a plank. So I got plenty of meat to do this on. So I'm going to take that little hole that we punched and I'm going to center punch it pretty good. And that's just going to help me use the drill and the centering device later without walking off target. And that's like the last thing you want to do is walk off target. So just center punch both sides and then we'll be ready to drill that baby. Uh, I've drilled a lot of barrel pins by hand, and it can certainly be done, and you can, if you're careful, you can do it pretty well. But uh, I really prefer using a drill press and using this RE Davis fixture. This is a point-to-point -point drilling fixture, and the way it works is you line up this point with the point of the drill. And then by doing that, when you actually drill your piece, oops, all right, I'm knocking that around. When you actually drill your piece, the way you'll do it is you'll put the point in one hole and you'll bring the drill into the other hole. Now I'll have this braced when I do it. And then you're going to drill that hole straight and you can drill halfway through from one side, flip it over, drill halfway through from the other side and you know that the holes are going to meet perfectly and you'll be able to put a pin through there. So that's the way we're going to drill this. Now, there are going to be a lot of times when you're working on a, a long rifle where you're going to have 
a lot of gun sticking out past wherever the area is that you're working on it. And that can be a problem, obviously. So I made up this little stand uh, to help me support the gun when it's, it's sticking out somewhere inconvenient. So it's just made out of a little bit of lumber with, uh, with a base that lets me stand it up. And then I drilled holes uh, along the, this entire length that are about an inch apart. And I've just got a 3 8 inch dowel, and I peg it into whatever hole I need to use to level off the piece. It's, it's not perfect, but it's a lot better than just having it waving out there in the middle of nowhere. Okay, it just went through the tenon. You can feel when you hit it. Alright, now I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to do the other side. Alright, it's a moment of truth. Let's see if we can drive a pin through it. All right, there we go. Pinned right through. Just have to do it two more times.